Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another month of Wine Club Wines. Today we're doing January's Wines. I can't thank you enough for all the support, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you that's in this club. So we're gonna jump right into the wines. I wanna make this straight to the point, and we're gonna use a different way of analyzing these wines moving forward. It's basically gonna be who, what, where, when, why, and how. Huh. We're gonna get straight to the point, and it's gonna be a fun way to break these down in a very black and white way, right? So let's get into it. First wine, the Kaor, the Malbec. Who? So the producer here, that would be the who, is the Domaine Cosset Massanouve. What is next? What is this wine? Well, this wine is Malbec. It does not say Malbec on the label, as is the case with most European wines. It just tells you where it's from, and they expect you to know what's in it, which takes us to the where. This wine is from Caor. It's from the south of France, southwest part of France, south of Bordeaux. The region is called, again, Caor, C-A-H-O-R-S, with a silent S, okay? That's the where. When, that's going to be the vintage. When did they make this wine? 2011, so it's got a little bit of age on it, which I love. There's no aging requirements really in this region, so we're going to skip that. Why? Why are they making this wine? Great question. So that's what they do in this region with a lot of European wine making regions. If you want to make a wine in a region, you have to adhere to a specific set of rules and in most cases, a specific set of grapes. In Kaur, they grow Malbec. That's what they do. That's why they are making this wine. They're actually allowed to blend in a little bit of Merlot and Tanat, but we don't see a lot of that. It's mostly Malbec. Malbec is king here. And finally, how? How are they making this wine? Well, these guys are certified organic. There's a big attention to biodynamic processing in the wine. Everything they do is trying to take care of the land and give back to the land, which is very, very cool. I love it. It's minimal intervention. They don't manipulate the wines at all. Uh, sometimes they will use a little bit of new and old oak in the wine, but you're not going to get big oaky wines out of this region. Okay, so that's the approach. Let's jump into the tasting now. Hope you guys remember from the first month, um, the method that we're using is FEW, right? F-E-W. FEW stands for fruit, earth, and wood. Remember that fruit can be divided into fruit and non-fruit, earth, and then wood applies to any presence of oak in the wine. So let's dig into it. Fruit components on this wine. I love that in Malbec, you get these really darker berried notes to the wine. So you get this darker blueberry, darker blackberry, and you're even gonna get this in this old world example. You get a strong note of lavender, very floral. So what I, what I love about this wine is that there's a lot of non-fruit characteristics, right? It's not necessarily driven by the fruit, although there is a ton of ripe fruit, but there's a lot of non-fruit components. You get like these beautiful baking spices, tobacco, there's like a dried herb component, sage, rosemary, little savory, kind of meaty, gamey component. Earthy for sure. As far as the earth component is concerned, there is for sure an underlying earth minerality to this wine. It almost smells like wet forest floor or fresh potting soil. And then oak, maybe there's a little bit of oak on the wine. Doesn't come across as being intensely oaky, but let's take a taste. So we'll jump right back in to FEW. Fruit, I want to confirm the same darker blueberry and blackberry components in this wine. Very ripe, but kind of a drier finish as well. The non-fruit notes for sure are there on the palate as well. So you're getting a lot of this tobacco, this spice, this baking spices, pepper, dried herbal note is still there, kind of sage that's coming through. This is amazing. You get a lot of this kind of earthy components that come through. Again, the same thing that we got in the nose. You're getting potting soil, wet forest floor, a little gravelly component to it as well. And there are some baking spices, maybe a touch of vanilla, some of this kind of notes that would indicate some presence of oak in the wine. But I think the, the thing to take away from this wine is that there is a substantial amount of earthy underlying tones to the wine, which is amazing. So it's not just all fruit. There's a good amount of baking spices, earth, a little bit of that kind of Bordeaux barnyard characteristic that comes through in the wine, which I really like as well. That is here for sure. That comes from the minimal intervention and the style of the region. From a structural point of view, this wine is very medium bodied. From the alcohol, alcohol says 13.5% on the label, very medium bodied very medium tannin. There's not these big tannins on it. The alcohol is, again, isn't very big at all. Acidity is there. It's kind of medium. So very medium across the board. It's not a big beast and it's not very delicate and fragile either. It's right across the board. I think if you like this style of wine, I want to do this to a comparison of other regions. If you enjoy this style, you should definitely dabble in some types of Chianti. You should look at wines from the region of Bandol, which is in the south of France and a lot of other regions from the southern part of France, especially southern Rhone, like maybe some Côte de Rhone regions that are heavier in Syrah might be a little bit comparable to this style as well. Finally, let's do a little food pairing with this wine, right? So since it is a medium bodied wine, it's not like a big beast, you can do leaner cuts of meat, right? You can do pork, you can do different styles of duck, would be amazing with this, pulled pork, 
roasted pork, if you did a stuffed pepper dish, right? There's all these kind of like dried pepper, dried herb comp with this wine. If you could match that with some type of food, and whether it be stuffed peppers or something that had a dried herb component with the wine, it would absolutely crush it. Same with Chianti, it kind of follows that same, um, that same logic when you have a dried pepper, dried herb component in the wine. If you can match that with the food, it's amazing. Okay, so that's that wine. Let's move into the New World wine. All right, guys, here we go. So the New World wine, right? Same approach. We're gonna do who, what, where, when, why, and how. Okay, so who? Who's making this wine? Cuvillier Los Andes is the producer, right? Made by the Cuvillier family. A lot of French ties. They own a couple of really cool chateau in Bordeaux, including Chateau Leoville Perferrer. It's an amazing, amazing wine. This is kind of their Argentine project. What? So Malbec. In the New World countries, they like to list the grape right on the label, making it very easy for you. I think that's one of the reasons why people get a little bit intimidated from the old world wines over here, is that you don't even know what you're getting into, but now you do. So Malbec, that's what they do in Mendoza. It's the most widely planted quality grape in Argentina, which takes us to the where. Where is this wine from? Argentina, always think big and then go small, right? So South America, Argentina specifically, and then Mendoza is a region kind of in the middle. And then within Mendoza, there's a smaller area called Valle de Uco, which is where this wine comes from. It's a little bit higher in elevation. We're looking at about 3,200 feet in elevation, which is definitely gonna affect the way that the grapes grow. All right, when? So this wine was made in 2016, somewhat of a cooler vintage, which if you have a cooler vintage, might mean that the wine isn't as big and bold and ripe as some Malbecs might be. So why are they making this wine? Well, we kind of talked about that. That's what they do in this region. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't find other great grapes in Mendoza. There's some really killer Cabernet coming out of here, as well as some Syrah, and they're playing with a lot of other varietals. But Malbec is the classic grape from this region. It is the grape to know. That's why they're making this wine. And lastly, how? How are they making it? Again, minimal intervention. They're making it in a kind of French style, so they're not gonna go for these huge riper styles of Malbec, which is something to note. They are doing minimal intervention and they are aging this wine in about 60% French oak barrels. None of it new, but they are using French oak, which is gonna add a little structure and tannin to the wine. All right, so let's dig into the wine. Let's look at the taste. Again, we're looking at few, right? F-E-W. Also something kind of interesting to know is that right away, this wine looks a lot darker than the Malbec from Kaur. Now Malbec is known to be a thicker skin grape. It stains the glass a lot. When you're doing a blind tasting and you're looking at wines, Malbec tends to pop out pretty intensely because of its pretty neon darker color. Now this one isn't as intense. Again, I'm gonna be upfront about this. This isn't the in your face, high alcohol, full bodied, high tannin beast of a Malbec that some Malbecs can be. This style is a little bit more restrained for a new world Mendoza Malbec, right? Just wanna put that out there. I like that because there's more complexities to the wine. It's not a fruit bomb in your face. It does have a little bit more complexity because of that. For the fruit, there's definitely more of a dominance of darker blueberry and blackberry and this really bright floral lavender component to the wine right away. I'm not getting the big earthy mineral tones that I was getting from the old world wine. I mean, the floral notes on this are absolutely incredible. They're pretty intense. They're very elevated. The earth tones on this wine, a little minimal, at least on the nose. I am getting a little bit of this brighter vanilla and baking spices that are popping out that are probably indicators of oak on the wine. Let's taste it. My God, I love this wine. Okay, so there is definitely a dominance of fruit on the wine and the fruit is much more intense. There's a presence of this big blueberry jam, blackberry jam, boysenberry, right? Much darker fruit, but it kind of coats your palate. There's definitely more dominance of fruit, but you do get some non-fruit components that balance out as well. Again, under non-fruit, I'm gonna that there's bright violet and lavender notes that are coming out of this wine that are really pretty. You're getting baking spices just like we were on the other wines. You're also getting more of a gamey kind of dried meat component that's coming out in this wine, which I really enjoy. So much more fruit. You're also getting some non-fruit characteristic. The earthy tones are a little bit more subtle. This doesn't seem like an earthy, barnyardy, funky wine to me at all unlike this one where it definitely had those characteristics. It's a little bit more subtle on that note. And we are getting some of this little vanilla baking spices that come from French oak aging in this wine. So to cap this wine up, I think this is a richer style. Now, again, this is only 13.5% alcohol, same alcohol level as this. I'd probably call this like medium plus verging on full bodied style of Malbec. 
right? The tannins are pretty subtle. They're very well integrated. There are some kind of gritty tannins in the background, but by no means it is, is it interrupting the process of tasting this wine, which sometimes that can happen. And I think those are the two major things that I take out of this wine, right? Kind of medium plus to fuller style, and the tannins are a little bit elevated, but still, still in check. So again, if anything, I want you to walk away with a couple of things that in the New World Mendoza style, you're gonna get a bigger bodied style of Malbec. You're gonna get these juicier, riper, jammy, darker berry tones right with some non-fruit components like violet and gamey notes very pretty floral notes that come across not very earthy and definitely a little bit of presence of oak on the wine so if you enjoy this style of wine some areas like where do you go to next right i think that you would consider you should consider some new world syrah right some syrah from santa barbara from paso robles definitely look at some fuller body styles of zinfandel that that exhibit some darker fruit components right but that still has the jamming notes that are in check you should be checking out syrah zin and some fuller styles of Merlot for sure from the new world if you enjoy this style of wine. Guys, so that's it. Let me know what you think about these videos, please. I want to make these more approachable and more practical for you. I hope you like it. Happy drinking. I'll talk to you soon.